Hello everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you a super cool solution to scrape unlimited data behind authentication, behind like all the nested uh, web structure. Uh, you have to like interact with the page to get the data. And uh, there are many practical reasons that why you need to scrape data online because you need that a data-based decision-making process sometime. But me personally excited for this is because I'm always interested in this security and a passing security, like a hacking way of doing things. And I, I took a cybersecurity courses, but scraping data is cooler than that in the sense like you are not directly working with the system. You totally bypass, you, you are using the resources in plain sight. Everyone has access to, uh, but you did it. Uh, so that's super exciting because if you think about all the data, all the information online, it is sitting somewhere in the database, usually in a centralized uh, host owned by some bigger guys, uh, which I don't like. I don't like the centralized idea. Uh, so scraping data is you don't need access to that database, but you get all the inside out of the database. And um, there was something else. Um, yeah, if you are, because my background was in uh, machine learning, so if you are familiar with the GAN models, it's basically the same idea. You to, to be a good policeman, you have to have a good criminal and vice versa. And it doesn't matter which one you start with, uh, but you, ca you have to keep the game going. So that's a little bit of rambling. Uh, but uh, I'm really excited. And uh, so in this video, I'm going to share three points. Uh, one is the context of this project, like what exactly triggered this, why it makes economically and intellectually sense for me to solve this problem. Um, so you can also like predict what problems I'm going to encounter. And second is uh, how I actually solved each problem and uh, the lessons I learned along the way, both the like cybersecurity model of data accessing, as well as like the very technical, the front end, the uh, code detail, uh, which may be boring to some of you if you are not super into technical stuff. And the last part is how to access the code and use the tools I uh, shared on GitHub. Enjoy today's video. Okay, now the context time. So I'm gonna explain to you uh, the situation I'm in. It's similar when you're actually being a machine learning engineer or whatever as a employee in a workplace, you want to understand the business context before approach that specific task assigned to you. And that's why I'm giving you this section. Uh, so the situation I was in was, I was in a paid community, which is uh, super active. There are hundreds of people and literally thousands of posts. And initially I, so, Basically, the problem I had was because the workload is way bigger than I expected and I wasn't able to show up for the coaching calls or ask help, uh, I, I basically didn't have the bandwidth to even phrase my questions problem properly. And uh, so what I did, I realized I was more in an explorative stage rather than in a, like, a, I have a clear direction where I'm going. Um, so, sorry. Um, stay on track. Stay on track. Um, so initially, I proposed to the owner of this community, which is Charlie Morgan. Not, yeah, Charlie Morgan, not Charlie Munger, Charlie Morgan. Uh, so I proposed to him that if I can build a chatbot based on the coaching calls transcript. And he rejected me. He rejected me. So Charlie, if you are watching this video, you know this video is made for you. Uh, anyway, uh, then I realized I actually didn't need his permission to build this chatbot. And then I started collecting the uh, the Zoom call recording stuff. But then I realized um, the audio transcription was not great, and there will be a lot of work involved in data processing um, to like convert that video information into uh, structured knowledge information. But I, I still have this project in the back of my head. Uh, so, and I just continue doing my agency work. So this community, I signed up to learn how to do marketing and sales for online coaches because that's what I'm passionate about. Um, so until one day I realized, like, I started searching for some super specific technical question uh, in the community post. Then I realized using that, using those posts to uh, create this chatbot or this um, knowledge database will be much better idea than those uh, processing this video. And that's where I started having this scraping 
data idea. And at the same time, I also need to do lead generation for the email marketing as well as for our uh, DM uh, process. And um, I started uh, playing with different data scraping tools, uh, which are already there. You don't need to code anything. But the problem is uh, they are super expensive if you really want to do something at scale. Uh, and as an engineer, everything need to be solved at scale. <laughs> if it can't be solved like for 10 people, you probably don't even want to start it, right? Um, that's a problem I have. But uh, I was playing with this tool called Bardeen. However, for my specific use case, there are 10,000 community posts. And if I were to really use this tool, it's going to cost me $3,000. So I basically have three options. I can give up this project, that's the easiest route. And the second, I can pay for that $3,000 but I'm not that rich. And the last option is I develop a solution myself. So yeah, I start reading about how to write a data scraper in Python because that's the only language I'm familiar with. I ended up with this pretty cool tool that are capable of bypassing uh, the authentication issue can like interact with the pages because the a lot of time like the, the data you need to scrape is not like all expanded. You need to be able to communicate with the web page to see if there are still nasty the data structure that you need to simulate that human interaction process so that you can like open all the data. And uh, there are several like more granular technical issue like when you use uh, when you select uh, the element on the page like if it's a compound class name you can't just use the select elements by name anymore you need to use CSS selector which I have no idea uh, but that's gonna be the next section where I gonna go through the actual code the structure and the, the lessons I learned um, yeah okay um, I'm going to walk you through the six high level steps first so you can have the mental map to hold the structure of the information going to come up later on. And then I'm going to talk you through the like tiny technical lessons. So on high level, you first, of course, want to um, have the URL, you know, what data you are trying to script. So you prepare that. that. That's a separate thing, not included a part of this project where I already use a free tool Bardeen to script all the URL of the post. And the second part is to make sure all the URLs do exist because there was like a three days gap between I script all the URL to the uh, time I actually start scraping the content of the URL. Then in, in those three days, some posts already got deleted. So you need to check if the URL still exists and you want to handle that error if it doesn't exist. The third step is use your local authentication to access uh, the data on the page, uh, which is, uh, I tried a different approach first by looking at their cookies and headers, which is just a headache because uh, they are actually using AWS ALB uh, security. I don't know the details, but uh, all the methods I have tried didn't work. The next step is to now you have access to the URL, you are authenticated to access the pages, and then you start iterate, iteratively visit each page and make sure all the data are fully expanded. Uh, my case is um, there are like posts that you want to click to read more or under a post, you have a lot of replies and you need to click view more replies and you need to have a while loop that makes sure all the uh, expandable content is expanded. Uh, the last one is to parse out the data you downloaded because when you just downloaded, they are not structured in the way that you want to store for later retrieval and easier digestion. And if you don't uh, like clean up or structure the data that's easy to digest, you, you're going to get the data and you don't really get insight from it because it's hard to read. Um, so that's the six steps for the technical lessons. So to bypass authentication issue, and when I say bypassing, it doesn't mean you don't need the um, like username and password. It just means you can access uh, program programmatically. Uh, so to to do that, the solution is Selenium because it allows you to run a local server to use your local password to access the page. Basically, it's a replacement of Chrome and you have fully access to. Second is 
when a page display 404 does not mean the requested status code is actually 404. Mine returned 200 and it took me forever to realize what I'm seeing like on the page is not what is actually communicating in the code. The next lesson is, uh, as I said before, there if there are nested content on the page and you need to click them all open before scraping the data, then it's, there is a possibility where after you clicked through code, the pixel didn't actually load. And then when you execute the scraping step, it will throw you error because it like the data isn't there. So you may need to set a sleep time, like one second or two seconds to make sure that interaction actually happened before uh, you start scraping it. The next step was something very tiny is when you select the element on the page, um, the easiest way is to use X bypass X path because you can just copy paste it. But the issue with that is it's not generalized enough. Like if there are many similar buttons or replies or posts on the same page, you don't want to like manually copy paste all of them. And also they are less predictable because they are less structured. So what you want to do is you want to select by class name, which I learned, but if a class name has multiple elements in it, which is called a compound class name, it wouldn't work. So instead, you will need to use a thing called the CSS selector in the new version of this um, Chrome driver library. The next is this bothered me for a while, like when you write data into CSV, how, like if you're writing a paragraph or an article into a single cell, then how can you make sure that single cell can present multiple lines properly? Because I was just always worried like how it's gonna interpret that new line character. Uh, it turns out it is just interpret as expected. For some reason, I just felt it's hard and never tried it. Uh, which I found myself stupid. The next one is um, for like real life project like this, definitely expect like to handle, like expect the work to learn about the edge cases. Like when you do uh, algorithm solution in lead code, they will give you this, oh, it complete, it solved 90% of the problem. And there's one weird case that satisfy all the problem definition, but it, your solution just does not work. And then you may need to solve it in a smarter way, or you need to, may need to just hard code the handling of it. So for this project, uh, uh, there are cases where the post that only have a title doesn't have like the actual content and when the page loaded it doesn't have a placeholder either it will just mess up my indexing while referring to the data or like the watch number is similar issue like almost uh, all posts have like even no one is watching the post it will have a number zero but for some reason some posts just doesn't have any number and that cause error and the last one which is probably the biggest lesson is because i have rep repeated these mistakes multiple times in the past which is when you start a new project you want to like get the proof of concept very solid before you move on. So I had five files for different URL like collection and they range from 300 to 6,000 URLs each file. Instead of starting from the 300 one, I was like just impatient. I started with that 6,000 one and I just finished all of them without like really checking the quality of the result until I actually started using the data that I realized that nested post issue that I basically have to do the whole work. And I was worried my scraper got throttled stuff. I basically have a random number from like for each post I scraped, it um, will wait for one to three seconds, which basically means it will take quite some time to scrape all the data. I basically wasted an entire day because I didn't have um, the quality check in place. So. Let's try not to make the same mistake next time. Okay, the last part of how to access this tool. Uh, of course, in the link uh, in the description of this video, uh, you just go to the GitHub, you can just right click download or you set up your uh, Git version control. And if that's something 
you are scared of doing, it's probably a better decision to not do this at all or spend $3,000 to prevent your mental damage. Um, yeah, let me know what you think of this entire video and uh, um, if this is helpful for anyone at all. Bye.